Because of all the cool assassins, these are the best champions in the game, Fish, and we finally get to see them going at it once and for all. We certainly are, but for, before we get into it, let's have a look at who's taking to the rift. Starting on the blue side of Summoner's Rift, representing Team Fire from Turkey's TCL, is going to be up in the top lane. Elwyn from Dark Passage. Heading into the jungle will be Crystal from Team Aura. As well as in the mid lane will be Naru from Supermassive. Zetnot, the AD carry from Dark Passage, as well as his support, Double Doge from Supermassive. Meanwhile, in the red corner is the Oceanic Warriors, representing Team Ice. In the top lane is Swiper from the Chiefs. Jungler is Carbon from Legacy. Their mid lane a Swiffer from the Chiefs, AD Carry, the legend Raid it from the Direwolves, and their support Rosie from Tainted Minds. And I know starting off with this Chiefs lineup, uh, Vedius, I know you have something you really oh, want yeah. to talk about, about their AD Carry in particular. Yes, Raid it. Now, Rusty was telling me how he got to sit down with the Oceanic players yesterday, and he they were all like, yo, what's with the Vayne pick? Why did you guys pick Vayne? And the team said, four of us said we did not want Vayne. Raider said he wanted to play Vayne. <laughs> so they ended up playing Vayne. And Raider, using his powers of coercion, ended up turning the team in his favor, and he managed to lock in his vein. Well, he's technically a lawyer now, Vedia, so when a lawyer says that his one is greater than four, you better listen to him, because the judge is always going to be on his side. Another player that we really have to look out for is Naru, because on day one, he played really well. Yeah, he certainly did. He was playing assassin mode on that Oriana yesterday. He had a fantastic performance, and, I mean, a lot of people underestimated this Turkish line. I know I certainly wasn't expecting them to come in so strong, but yesterday performant, uh, they performed out of this world. Naru in particular just had such great support with the rest of his team, and he used that gold so effectively. And he did that yesterday on Oriana. I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do on an assassin today. Exactly that. If you can assassinate people as Oriana, heck, any assassin would be great for oh, yeah. coming as a assassin. Maybe we'll get, you know, your Katarina pick. Oh, the Vedias. dream, my friend, the dream. I hope we get at least one Katarina. I've literally got a novel prepared for my beautiful <laughs> champion. I can just walk away. Yeah, you can leave right? at that yeah. point. That'd be great. Um, <laughs> but no, I obviously need you here, Fish. I couldn't do this without you. Um, and how else could we hype up all these fantastic Assassin Champions? Because we've had so many different changes come out. You know, we've got changes to Zed. We've got changes to Rengar. We've got changes to Cat. LeBlanc will be the big one. You did hear them talking about it on the desk as well. Um, but... It's largely going to be a question of who plays what, because we have seen Carbon throughout the regular season bring out uh, a mm -hmm. fair amount of Rengar. Uh, we have seen Swiffer bring out the LeBlanc in the past. Naru was well known uh, back in the day for his assassin playstyle, and you did hear them in the uh, in the pre-game little show thing that uh, Swiffer was certainly looking forward to seeing how well <laughs> the rest of his team can do on these assassin champions. Which, which was really surprising, because Swiffer, you know, normally plays those mages in the mid lane instead of the assassins a couple of times picking up the LeBlanc, and Carbon's the one that has played quite a bit of Rengar. Uh, where the side of Turkey, we saw a couple of the players that didn't necessarily play Assassins say they really wanted to showcase how they could play Assassins just to kind of show the world that they can pick up these champions. Yeah, I did hear Dumbledore say yesterday, I have at least one Assassin. I'm good, guys. <laughs> I'm good. I've got this. Uh, and to be honest, like, you can still play Pantheon. Like, you don't need much skill to play Pantheon. I've got to be honest, right? You just it, He has a lot of point-and-click abilities. Uh, he's pretty fail-safe. High skill cap. Katarina is definitely up there. LeBlanc, I would definitely say, requires a bit of thought behind it since there's a little bit more uh, intricacy to it now with delays uh, in not only her passive, but how her W works as well. Uh, and also the way in which you use your ultimate as well. So there's a bit of intricacy in some of the champions, but then you could also just play Rengar and just press all your buttons, <laughs> and I'm sure that, that'll that work, you know, just... Well, we saw that work during the 1v1s yesterday. Yeah, exactly. Oddy brought it out yesterday, and he was able to take down Evie, uh, which was very enjoyable to watch, but uh, I'm really excited to see this. Just to remind people, this is blind pick. There are no bans. You don't get to get rid of anything, and I'm pretty sure these teams have a good idea of what they're going to lock in pretty early. And speaking of blind pick, we're heading into champion select for the first match of the Assassin Mode uh, games that we'll have here today. Turkey taking on Oceania. Like you mentioned, blind picks. So we're just going to have to see what they decide to lock in. Uh, looks like a couple things have been locked in, but my eyes are on Double Doge right now. Come on, do it for me, my friend. I know you're tempted. I know you want to lock it in. And already so many champions locked in. We have a Shaco in the jungle. Mithy, he didn't expect it to come out, but Carbon, he's saying, yo, I've got this. <laughs> Swiper bringing out the Pantheon in the top lane. We've got a Diana in the mid. So far, we've got no mirror matchups. Perhaps we have a LeBlanc on the support as well. Ari, maybe the AD carry Ari. You know, we were debating whether or not it would work out, but there's certainly a lot of AP. I mean, a fair amount of mix on the side of Team Ice from the Oceanic squad. I mean, I feel like they've came in with a plan with this one. And you know, picking up the LeBlanc for Le Rosie almost feels quite fitting here because when he was playing for as a support in the OPL, he was picking up Static Shiv Rapid Fire Cannon Bard. This guy's <laughs> a monster. 
giving him the ball. Oh, yes. kind of makes it's sense. It's been locked in, Fish. It's been locked in. I get my Katarina game. I've been asking for this for so long. Dumbledore, you are my hero. I knew Team Fire wouldn't let me down. Oh, this is going to be exciting. I want to wait until everything is locked in so then we can try and talk about these kind of comps. But what we can say for sure is LeBlanc, very strong. Looks like it's going to be going in that support role. I actually used to have a teammate who was a LeBlanc support main, and he used to make it work all the time. You go for very early chains, and with the changes to chains, she's actually very effective down in the bottom lane. But in terms of overall team comps, what all of them want to do is buy a lot of items that kill stuff, and then they're going to want to go and kill their opponents, right? I kind of feel like that's the general idea here. That's yes. assassin team comps, ladies and gentlemen. Buy a lot of items and kill as many people as possible. So we have to see which team is going to get the upper hand. And we talked to Carbonelli, said it's an exciting mode. Lots of kills. It goes on for about 30, 40 minutes. It's just going to be tons and tons of action. But we still want you guys to vote for your favorite team to win this match. Head over to at Esports and use the hashtag T-U-R-Win or the hashtag O-C-E win to vote for your favorite team heading into the first match for today. Ladies and gentlemen, assassin mode. This is going to be so much fun. I know for a fact that the players are excited. It should be a bloodbath. No slow laning phase, only hardcore action. And that is what I'm most excited for. As Frosker was mentioning us earlier, you know, it is completely man mode. You can't really tank up. You can buy the bits and pieces, but no Warmogs, no Randuin's Omids, no Guardian Angel to keep yourself alive. You buy damage, you go in, and you just hope you get out alive. That is certainly the case. So, we have a lot of assassins on the board. Fish, I'm going to leave the decision down to you. Are there any assassins that you want to cover first? There, do you have any favorites that you want to look at? So, you know, I look at this and I go, I would. there's so many different things I'd like to cover here, but I just see the Katarina. Yes, you do. how much I you know. want to talk about this, Vidya. All right, so <laughs> for the time being, right, so Katarina, her changes, let's run through her changes for a start, right? So she's no longer the point-and-click assassin like she used to be. Uh, she's not so much just dive in and just press all your buttons anymore. She has quite a lot of intricacies with her blades. So now you actually use the blades to reset your Shimpo cooldown. She still has her old passive of if she gets any kills or assists. Her cooldowns are reduced by 15 seconds, but typically what you're going to want to what you're going to want to do is max the Q. It's your main wave clearing tool, it's your main harass tool. It only hits onto three minions, but it will leave a dagger. If you walk into that dagger, it resets the cooldown of your Shimpo or it reduces it by a certain percentage of that cooldown. The more points you put in it, the higher the percentage reduction is. And it just means that the later the game goes, the stronger the Katarina gets and the more reset potential that she has. But what I'm really interested to see is how well Dumbledoge can manage his daggers because that is how, what the difference between bad Katarinas and good ones. And just sticking on Katarina for a bit, you can already see Dumbledoge going for the dagger. Dark Seal good as his choice. first item, whereas Rosie choice. is going for the support item instead. Uh, looking to just try and take passive gold, probably give most of it over towards Radia, who it is in fact going for the AD carry Ari. Yeah, it does look like that. So Team Ice actually opting for a traditional bot lane, the quote unquote. <laughs> uh, so I think that'll be quite an interesting one. Already you can see that Team Fire have gotten the early push. So right now, Team Ice will be a little bit on the back foot, struggling to try and deal with that wave clip. Um, but how the gold is distributed in the bottom lane will actually mean a lot for the Katarina because both Ari and Katarina are very item reliant. They have fairly poor base stats, but very good scaling. Katarina is a little bit better with the changes now to the passive on her spinning blades. Mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, they're still both pretty item reliant. And you can see now that the lane is actually pushing towards them. The the fact that Radia has AD actually gives them a big advantage in terms of the 2v2. We move into the mid lane now. Swiffer up against Naru. Fizz are taking on the Diana here. Naru using, doing a really good job so far trading against the fish. But Carbon is in this lane looking to see if he can try and get a gank off here. But was spotted out by the Kha'Zix. We'll jump over the wall, but Naru spots him out. They're able to pull him backwards. Here comes Kha'Zix to jump over the wall. Gets on top of Carbon for first blood as well. Swift has been flashed on. He has to flash away. And Team Fire get first blood. Carbon going for the solo Q plays. A charm lands in the bot lane. Bottom lane, Dumbledore. going to get locked up. There's the Ignite. Radius putting down the auto attacks. Flashes forward, oh! but hits the turret. Doesn't get the final auto attack. Exhaust goes out to a Zetna. Charms him back. Radius dead as Dumbledore dashes in as well. Ignite Reset. Put Reset. On towards Rosie. Oh. Not quite enough for Dumbledore to catch up to Rosie. Oh, action already. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what we promised you and this is what you're going to get. So unfortunate for Raider. He goes to the flash order and he hits the tower. Oh, that couldn't have gone any worse for him. But Dumbledore is able to get away just barely with his life. Zayt not then able to turn it around. Just such clutch stuff. But let's start with the middle lane. Carbon going for the solo Q Shaco build. He has decided to run with the exhaust. 
He used it as a means to try and force Nara back. He didn't realize that he was spotted out by Crystal and ready for the turnaround gank. Meanwhile, this is the damage that you get from LeBlanc nowadays. The charm lands, there's the chain. You see the passive being brought, bang! Gets popped by the chain itself, and it just does so much damage, and then raid it right at the last second, fails, and ends up hitting the turret, which is really what ends up losing them this trade. So very unfortunate for Team Ice right there. Rosie as well using the W really quickly. They're trying to get the instant damage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <isn't it>? oh, <laughs> right here. Oh, he knows he's messed up there. Yeah, he knew. But Rosie now coming for a row mid. Yeah, looking to try and get the gank off towards Naru. Getting a few auto attacks down. There goes the chain. Swiffer's trying to jump on top of him, but just a little bit too tanky, the Diana in the mid lane. Yeah, I mean, this is probably the most uh, conventional lane that we have on the Rift right now. Uh, Fizz versus Diana. Early levels tends to go towards Fizz's favor. And remember now that Fizz has had a couple changes himself. Not some massive ones. The, the one you really need to pay attention to is his ultimate. The further it travels, the more damage and the more CC it actually does. As Dumbledore's going a little bit aggressive. Getting quite, quite hard. Yeah, quite a bit of damage down on towards Radio. Dodges out the charm. Rosie is waiting in the wings, but he's only level two on this LeBlanc. Dumbledore's has already hit level four. Oh, that's thanks to the early kill that he was able to get. Rosie going to be struggling a little bit in farm. And you can actually see that the... The farm is being evenly split between the two bottom laners as uh, Crystal making his way up to the top. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why I'm surprised. I don't know why I am surprised. Uh, it is the best Keystone Mastery to run in Assassin mode. Um, but yes, let's talk about this top lane because we haven't yet. Pantheon, point and click, the ultimate skill champion. Um, ooh, flash charm. Flash forward. Rosie does get charmed up, but does distort away to get back to safety. Carbon waiting in the wings, trying to get the gank off, but Dumbledore and Zetnot have already disengaged. So, fun fact about Katarina and Shaco, her ultimate only goes off when you're within range of a target. So if Shaco is nearby, you can tell because your ultimate can actually be pro. Um, not that that's a useful feature, but <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ka Shaco's nearby, you know? Um, but yes, moving back to the top lane, uh, Zed versus Pantheon. Typically, this should go in the favor of the Pantheon early because you usually go for a bit of sustain with the Corrupting Potion. You just throw spears all day and it's difficult to trade back, but I don't know if he can get out of this one. They're looking for a die. Swiper will be able to stun up Eldwin. He's going to live with a sliver of health. Four. Swiper living with less than 10 health here. Crystal should be able to path him down and hunt him down. He does have teleport. Now let's see if he's going to be able to use that one to escape. He might just be looking for the execute instead. I think he might very well be able to get this, and he does well played. Swiper to get out of that situation. Uh, I felt like he may have gone for the TP play. He didn't want to risk it. He's going to keep that summoner spell. A bit of experience will go over to Crystal, but other than that, nothing too much loss. So well played by Swiper to get out of that, especially being a level down. He was laughing quite a bit there as well once he got executed. Knew he was able to, you know, outplay them a little bit. Stop the dive coming out from Eldwin. Both flashes burnt by the top laners, but Swiper will use his teleport to get back to the top lane as well. Certainly will. So now that we are seven minutes into the game, two kills on the board, let's run through some of the itemization that you do have the champions going for. Now, Swiper, ooh, we actually have a bit of a replay. Oh, that actually, this is great because we can actually see what Swiper was able to do and a bit of a misplay from Elwin. So he actually starts off by going with the ultimate. And notice his basic attack is actually going to hit into the block. Uh, that means that Swiper's going to avoid a lot of the damage. And it, he, oh, he just flashes out of range of the Shuriken to avoid that last tick. And because Crystal had already used his leap to get in range to try and finish off Swiper, he's able to get away. And bear in mind, Crystal had already used his flash earlier on, so then Swiper could just get away with the execute. Does give Crystal level six. Will rank himself up. Seems like he wants to return up to the top lane for Swiper. Goes Invisible, jumps on top of him, gets a good amount of damage now. Goes Invisible again, but Ooh. it's not going to be enough. Takes quite a bit of damage from the tower shot and the Thunderlord's proc from Swiper. Now, I'm surprised Swiper decided to go for the Serrated Dirk early. Um, having chatted with Rusty, he actually told me how if you just stack long swords, it's actually much more efficient than actually upgrading to the Serrated Dirk due to the changes to lethality. Um, but he's decided to get that as we see Dumbledore going in. Rusty taking a lot of damage. Dumbledore has been exhausted. Radio gets charmed up, looking for a kill to Zayt. Not the ignite is ticking. He gets it, but they're going back in. Dumbledore gets the reset. Oh, he's holding the turn, no. but he just can't quite do it. It's a double kill for Radio. Oh, Dumbledore, you could have easily gone on the double kill, but you just weren't fast enough with the Shunpo, and Radio is able to get himself the outplay. Oceania get themselves the desperately needed two kills. That bottom lane finally starting to work in their favor. But my word, that was one tense exchange. They're even a level, a, 
disadvantage. I mean, Zayn not only being level five, but look oh. at this gank in the mid. Carbon's in the mid lane. There goes the fish on towards Naru. Will knock him up. Let's see if they go for the dive. Swiffer and Carbon seem like they want it, but the turret echo goes onto the wrong two people and doesn't get the clone. So another failed gank in the mid lane from Carbon. Decided not to use the exhaust this time, but we'll put a bit of pressure down onto Naru. If Swiffer had used his ultimate a little bit sooner, it would have provided a little bit more crap strike and a little bit of extra damage. Uh, but he decided to get just up close and personal, so you didn't quite get the maximum usage out of that ult. Meanwhile, we see both supports roaming around the map, and now we're going to see that vision plank coming in as actually potentially a gank coming in from the Pantheon. Pantheon looking for the Grand Skyfall on top of Nara. He will get out of the circle, but Crystal jumps in, comes to first of four, double dojo spinning around for the double kill. He gets the triple kill, and he's still hunting down Rosie as well. What a play from Double Doge. There it is, ladies and gentlemen, the triple kill from the legendary Katarina. That's what we wanted to see. Fantastic use of the reset. Great positioning as Rosie's got caught out. St. Not's found it. We're going to dash over the wall, trying to chase down the LeBlanc. We'll be able to get one more auto attack. St. Not gets the kill. Rady is now trying to chase it down, but Double Doge, he's flashed over. He wants to help his friends. They're going for the turret dive. One more attack, it's all it takes. He gets the reset as well and gets back to safety. Thank God to Dumble Doge. He comes in as support for Zayt Not, who is in a bit of a tricky situation right there. A little bit ironic that the AP Ari is the one running heal and the AT Ari is the one with Ignite. Nevertheless, two kills further go over to the Turkish team. And already, just so much more bloodshed. 5-1-0 Katarina right now. Whew. I mean, where does the replay start? It has to be from the gank in the mid lane. So you can see, Naru is the target. They want to try and punish him. He has no flash. And they're somewhat expecting this gank, so the rest of five come in for the collapse. Crystal goes in a little bit early, but Double Doge can just come in with a perfect flank to get all of the resets. You can just see all of his daggers everywhere. Enables him to get the resets, and I mean, you really don't need that many skills early on because you you actually have great scaling with the uh, with AD. So as long as you get an early long sword, it works out. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, Rosie gets caught out of position, only being level five. Zayn not able to pick that kill up, and then Double Doge going in as we see more action. Meanwhile, Crystal's been able to take down Swiper. Carbon was close by, but not able to help out at all there. No, I mean, a little bit too quick for the OPL team to respond. And now Carbon is left up alone. Now Double Doge looking for another roam in the mid lane. But unfortunately, Katarina, one of the main reasons we're unlikely to see her in competitive play is due to her severe lack of utility, uh, which does hand a, a hinder her ability to roam around and gank in the mid lane. Uh, but nevertheless, a lot of pressure being exerted by the Turkish squad right now. Look at the level disadvantage between the two junglers here. Crystal, level nine on this car six. Carbon, still level six on this AP Shaco. As Dumbledore will get charmed up here by Radiant. Takes a little bit of damage, but is able to shump her to safety. I mean, you talk about the level disadvantage, but look at as well in the top lane, you see another gank in the mid. Grand Skyfall coming into mid lane. Naru's been hit by the fish, gets knocked up. Swiper gets the stun down as well. Looking for even more damage. He will dodge away from the playful tricks. So Crystal comes here. He's on top of Swiffer. Goes invisible, gets the last slash. And now Swiper's the target for Team Fire. Ooh. The OPL team here are not doing well at all, Vidius. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, it looks like Zayn not. He's been charmed up. Radius jumping in, but there goes Double Doge, trying to get as much damage down as possible. Radius picks up the first kill. Dumbledore is chasing him down. Should be able to get him with the final <laughs> auto attack. I mean, that's one way to kill your opponent, Dumbledore. But really, we have to focus on the outplay from Naru. He baited both members towards Crystal, who was just lying in wait, ready to strike. And then Naru with the quick footwork, and now Double Doge. Gonna have to be a little bit careful, but that is so much damage being thrown on towards Rosie with just one dagger. I know, right? It's crazy. I mean... Already working towards that uh, Hextech Gunblade. He's got 10 stacks of his Dark Seal video. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's why you should go for it early on because Katarina was just a killing machine. And if she gets an early lead, she snowballs out of control. Now, Dumbledore knows this is going on. But Rosie knows as well. Oh. He gets the shutdown, removes four stacks of the Dark Seal as well as Rosie gets the outplay onto Dumbledore. Oh, unfortunately for Dumbledore, she wasn't able to Shunpo away from the distortion. Nevertheless, let's backtrack what happened in mid lane. So Naru once again being the target focus. A lot of attention being focused onto the main assassin player. Uh, and not much success really coming out of it. Not really enough damage from Swiper, only being level seven. They couldn't really close it out. And then Crystal comes in and look at the damage. Just absolutely crazy stuff. Had already completed his first jungle item. Was already stacking up that AD. Zayt not getting caught out of position just a little bit. Ends up eating a charm and losing his life. But in exchange for that, 
Radiant has to trade it as well. <laughs> Ari versus Ari. Dashes versus Dashes. AD clearly the one on top, you know? Superior. Proof. Right here, right now. And eventually we saw Rosie get that crucial shutdown onto Dumbledore, but he has his Hextech Gunblade now, Vedius. Yeah. It's actually a very efficient item on Cat as well. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Double Doge work towards a Rhylized Crystal Scepter next. It gives you a little bit of extra tankiness, but on top of that, it gives you that bit of CC that you're lacking as a Cat Arena. The thing you have to bear in mind is that uh, it actually, it's actually quite potent because it slows down your target. If you, um, it deals a fair amount of magic damage, the active on the Hextech Gunblade, but it slows them down, enables you to get in range to then start dropping your combo. Now, we have to look at Naru, who's looking for a roam down in the bottom lane. There is vision, but he's going to run straight into Carbon. Carbon, though, is going to oh! get deleted from Summoner's Rift as Naru gets a drive-by onto the Oceanic Jungler. Now chasing down Radio Rosie. He's going to get popped here, left with less than 100 health. Zayn not charges on forward and picks up the second kill for Team Pyre. Losing that tier one in the mid lane hurt Oh. PL so much. They lost so much control over the bottom half of their jungle. This enabled Naru to roam around for the flank. I don't even think Khan was looking on his screen, and to be honest, he didn't get a chance to because he was gone before you could say, what? So much damage coming out from Naru. So effective. And they get themselves two kills off the back of it. They're just taking stock at where things are at now here, Vidius. 8,000 gold lead for the TCL team, but there is a teleport to the bottom lane. Swift is looking for a flank. Carbon's on top of Crystal. He goes for the turret time. Gets a kill to Radiant, but Satan has been locked out by Swiper. Crystal will fall. Double dodge being snared up here. He'll get taken down for a double kill for Swiper. So it looks like the Turkish squad overcommitted just a little bit. They tried to force a fight that they were not in a great position to do so. They didn't spend the gold that they had just picked up after that successful uh, setup in the bottom lane. And they end up getting punished for it. So nice response from OPL. Still proving that they have some fight left in the tank. But the thing that's really hampering them right now is this severe level disadvantage. Being a, picking up a couple of those shutdowns will certainly help them. But they have a long way to go before they can close this massive assassin gap. So we're taking a look at the items earlier. Everything looks fairly safe. But now, though, let's go into replay of that dive, Vidius. So you can see here, Fire, they feel pretty confident. They know they have the damage to kill Raider, and they successfully do so, but they have to commit so much to get him. They leave Zaynon on the back line, tanking the turret. Swipe is able to clean that up, and then in a three versus two, as well as the Illuminati Shaco boxes, that's just the... That's the crutch that prevents Turkey from being able to pick that turret, pick up a couple extra kills, and end up giving away a small advantage to OPL. Like we were mentioning there, all the items look fairly standard for a couple of these assassins, especially, you know, we see Zed, Kha'Zix all picking up standard items. Even Diana, kind of standard, you know, going for a little bit tanky in that mid lane. Ari very standard, same as the Katarina, but we've got a uh, hybrid Ari on the side of the OPL team here, Hybrid. <laughs> uh, he's going we for the Hextech gun Gunblade with Berserker Greaves. <laughs> going for that super sustained Ari build. Um, I mean... I guess it works. <laughs> um, huh. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have uh, Carbon on the AP Shaco, you yeah. know, just... I, yeah, you've, you've got me there. Uh, good one. Uh, <laughs> you've got me. Uh, can't explain that one, but look at Carbon. He's going to try a gank in the mid. Let's see if he can. Double Doge speed stand up. Rosie jumps over the wall, but Zaynos charging it to the back line. Rosie will take down Double Doge. Radiant loses with a sliver of health, but here comes Crystal. Leaps in, trying to get the kills. Tries to take down Carbon first. Rosie will fall, and Carbon will fall second here. Team Fire clean up the Oceanic team. Double Doge gives away his life, but the action's not over yet. So if it looks like he wants to go and gets oh! the flash playful trick. Trickster to take down Crystal, but Naru's here. He's going to be able to chase down the Fizz. Misses the Crescent Strike, but will pull him back with his W. Swiffer is trying to stay alive as long as possible. Trying to strike his way away. Trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against Naru now, and he does get back to safety. So Swiffer with the star points. He gets a kill. He gets himself out, and he actually makes that overall trade a two for two. So not bad for the Oceanic squad. They definitely committed a little bit harder than I think they wanted to. But it ended up working out as Elwin now. He's trying to dive on towards Swiper. Swiper knows that Turkish, Turkish top laners are a nightmare to deal with. But here comes Carbon, throws out the shiv and takes up a kill for his top laner. Surprise! It's Shaco and he is here to redeem his top laner. Swiper, after having a very tough early laning phase, is able to turn it around. But let's backtrack. Dumbledore ends up eating the charm. He ends up losing his life. The chain CC is too strong from the LeBlanc. 
Meanwhile, Crystal comes in from the flank, being that Kha'Zix. Really good flash here from Zaytnot, because they lose vision on him, and then he's able to buy time for his cooldowns, get the charm down onto Rosie, and they're able to get the two for two. But then Swiffer shows the max range damage of this shark, combined with the Empower W that, set, uh, that the Fizz now has and he's able to just walk out of here. Good sidestep from that Q is what really kept him alive. Nara running out of mana, but it looks like we may very well see more action as Crystal is moving towards his red buff. Carbon has to be very careful. Crystal will find him, puts down the exhaust, gets a lot of damage out towards the cards again, jumps on forward. The chains are not gonna connect, but can he get it? Yes, he does. The damage over time is enough. But Whoa! we are right here. Oh my goodness. He shoots, he scores. Nara gets another one. He is just on cleanup duty. Zayn not now being caught out. He's been exhausted though. Carver's gonna try and chase him now. Rosie looking for the chains, gets it, flashes forward and gets a kill onto that 80 carry, so to speak. It's Naru now in a 2 on 1. Swipe for Naru. No. He's looking for the He's outfit. Gonna do it. He gets one. He's going for oh Swiffer. My God. One more attack's enough. Naru no, no, no. no, can't. <laughs> and Swiffer gets the playful tricks to get the kill. Oh, Naru, you almost did it, you beast of a man. That was so close from the Diana. Wasn't quite able to pull it out. Swiffer keeping his team's hopes alive. But my god, action all over the map. We just don't get a breather, do we, Fish? No, we don't. This is amazing, <laughs> Venius. I mean, we were talking to Carbon LE. He said it's an action-packed game, and it certainly has been. And Dumbledore's been jumped off by Whoa. Carbon here. Gets a lot of damage now, but he can't get the reset. He can't pick up the kill. Ice will take down another member of Team Fire. That was so close for Dumbledore to get that kill. What he didn't realize was the box was actually put down behind him. And that fear is actually what interrupted his ultimate. But now, looking back to Naru, good flash over the wall, ends up eating the small fish. So it doesn't take a huge amount of damage from it. Buys enough time, then dodges over to Swiper to avoid the playful trickster. And then he's just buying time with the shield. So well played. And ah, oh, it's just so unfortunate if he was able, if he just. Just cooldowns. It was just cooldowns, and he would have been able to get the two versus one. But nevertheless, one for one trade in the two versus one. I think you can be happy with that. It's getting a little bit closer here as Crystal is going to be charmed up by Rainier. Just wants to get himself back to safety. Carbo will throw out his ultimate. Doesn't deal too much damage there, but Crystal will be able to escape. It uh, looks like we have another hybrid uh, character on the rift here. It's going to be Shaco, who's not just full AP. He's going for an extent. Oh, OK, that's well. fine. Yeah, I can, I can appreciate <laughs> that. I can respect that. He has pretty good uh, AP scalings on some of the changes that happened to him recently, like uh, on his Deceive uh, and on his Dagger as well, uh, or in the jacket box anyway. But something that we actually discussed earlier on was an Assassin's ability to take Baron. Uh, it looks like that when you run a Diana or a Kha'Zix, that rule doesn't apply to them. Pretty much. It's going to be a 21-minute Baron here. It's really hard to siege as Assassin, so Baron's the next best bet. Oh, yeah, it certainly is. So 21 minutes. Early on, Turkey definitely had full control during the laning phase. A couple of over-commitments, perhaps, resulted in OPL getting a couple favorable trades. They get some items under their belt. They started scaling relatively well. But now with Baron on the side of the Turkish squad, it looks like that they have regained control. But now what are they going to do with it? They've taken a lot of the tier two turrets already. Uh, note that Elwin has pretty much spent the entire game split pushing up on the top lane. Something that he is well known for in his defense is Carbon now in the mid. He's going in at some max range. Fish coming out to Naru. Carbon's incredibly oh low. Swipe is trying to jump in, but Double has got one kill already. That is going to fall. The reset's coming out for Katarina for the double. He's on top of Swiffer. Going to pick up his daggers. Playful tricks that comes out. Triple. It's a triple kill for Double Doge. Putting Team Fire in the lead again. I feel like the longer Dumbledore plays Katarina, the better understanding he has of the daggers, but the action's not done yet. Elwin's going in, Rosie tries to dash away, does dash away pretty well there, avoids all the damage from that death bar. Now looking oh. for Dumbledore, gets the shutdown. Rosie, that was amazing. I was just praising you, Dumbledore, and then you had to go and do that. Fair play to Rosie, landing the, the chains, but I don't think it's gonna be enough as Crystal. He's gonna go in, tries to jump on top of Rosie, flashes forward, gets him through. Through the exhaust. Elwin has to be a little bit careful because Carbon's dashing up forward as well. Radius trying to get as much damage down as possible. TP. Teleport coming to the back lines from Naru. Swiper's coming. No, Swiffer's coming in as well, Steve's. Let's see what they can do here. Naru, he's going to jump on top of Swiper. He's gone. Crystal picks up that kill. Team Ice are falling one by one here as Fire still pushed towards the inhibitor. That looks like they're going to get it too. Three members are alive for the OPL squad. Uh, that fish is actually absolutely massive. It sure but it's is. It's not going to do enough damage to deter the Turkish team as they walk away with the inhibitor, feeling pretty confident after that successful team fight.
23 to 16 on the scoreboard here. 49,000 to 38,000 gold. Let's take a look at that one again, Vedia. So Carvin tries to go in, be the initiator, but then Dara just turns it around like, you do not initiate on me, I initiate on you. He does go down relatively early, but not before he's able to get so much damage down. Dumbledore is just using Naru as a front line to then just clean up the rest of the fight. He gets himself the triple kill. He does give his life away a little bit later on, uh, but Besides that point, really good outplay from Rosie to avoid all the damages. Now, the action well, does continue. Carbon has been taken now, but Swiffer's jumping on top of Naru. Here comes Radio dashing in. Swiper's popped the Grand Skyfall. Swiffer with the Death Mask is going to be enough to take him down. Swiper's in amongst it, taking a lot of damage. That's Crystal will go on a killing spree to take down Pantheon. Three for one in favor of the Turkish team once more. Naru has to give away his life, but every time he does, he just does so much damage in return. And while all this has been going on, split push Katarina has been working her way up in the top lane. Remember, she actually has a fair amount of AD as well, thanks to the gunblade that she picked up. But now, can you get the outplay? You just used all your abilities, and Carbon's hungry for blood. He's gone in, throws down the Hexate gunblade, but Double Doge goes back in. Let's see what he can do. He's been locked down, pops the Zonia's hourglass. Carbon is going to try and run away. Double Doge knows what's the right one, but still, three on one is a little bit too much for Double Doge. Double Dumbledore's using his ultimate just too early, too often. He's getting feared up by Carbon, which is interrupting a lot of his damage. If he'd just been a little bit more patient, he perhaps could have come out with a kill there, but nevertheless, Team Ice are going to buy themselves a little bit more time, but they end up losing two turrets. They lose one Nexus turret. They've lost their tier two in the bottom lane, and slowly but surely, they are losing their base. They certainly are. 26 to 18, finally one Nexus turret has fallen. Two inhibitor turrets has fall have fallen and a single inhibitor has been taken out in the mid lane. As Crystal, you know, just somewhere off the map, gets a kill into Radiant. Killing 80 carries, as yeah. Kazakh does, you know? Um, but I gotta be honest, I feel like the big reason as to why Oceana's falling down is look at this build from Swiper. This is not a man build, Fish. <laughs> this is not how an assassin will play. Where is my Bloodthirster? Where is my Last Whisper? These are the sort of things I want to see on Pantheon. And Naru, he wants to see a bit more action, but for the time being, he's going to have to disengage. Swiper, the tank player from Oceania, you know, sticking to his guns, trying to build as tanky as possible. You have to be assassin mode. <laughs> Look at these builds coming out from the side of Team Fire. They've got... All right, he's got a more of Malmordius. Okay, never mind. Ka Crystal's been removed from this too. But look at the Katarina. Look at all the damage. That's what we want. Look at the RE. He's got a Zonia Zelko. Oh, ah. Oh. We should ban defensive items, period. <laughs> Just get rid of them all. As long as it has armor or Emma, get it out of here. You're only allowed to build BF swords and needlessly large rods. <laughs> that is all you're allowed. <laughs> Well, now we're going to see Team Fire try to siege up the top lane. Turkish team already got a lot of damage on towards that Terra Carbon. Pops his ultimate, sends his coin in first. Big fish coming up. Oh! Swiper lands on the two. Swiper's in amongst it. Radius coming around. Double Dodge gets a nice channel off, but a double kill coming out for Swiffer. Here comes Elwood. He's been exhausted, but already gets a single kill. Team Iso, they're taking out Team Fire one by one. Crystal gets a kill. Looking for the reset. Swiffer's going down as well. Double kill for Elwood. It's only two members up for Team Fire, but only one left for Team Ice. Things look so promising for the OPL squad, but they just could not deal with Elwyn coming in from the flank. Swiper, he still had his flash. Swiffer still had his flash, and they just could not react in time. With those death timers, Team Fire could look to try and end the game right now. Only Rosie left up. Eight seconds on Shaco. Carbon going to try and come up and save the game. Elwyn and Crystal chasing her forward. Crystal will dash away from the chains. Evolves in the middle of the oceanic base, as you do. That turret will fall, it seems. The minions will be able to take the one down. It's an open nexus here for TCL to take down. But Turkey, they realize that they don't want the action to end just yet. They still feel that they need to give the Oceanic team a bit of a fight, you know? So they're going to keep them alive for the time being. But let's have a look at this fight. So the actual initiation comes out from the Pantheon once again. The shark is absolutely fantastic because it lands onto Naru. Naru then flashes into two of his members saying, guys, help me. Gets the knock up onto Crystal. Dumbledore does get a full channel off, but he's just standing there. He doesn't use any of the resets. Ends up collapsing, but we have to backtrack because there's more action now. Swiper's in trouble. There's going to be a teleport coming out from Swiffer trying to save him. The shark comes out onto Elwood. Doesn't connect. Doesn't knock anyone up. And Crystal delivers a silver of health. Carbon now trying to save his mid laner. Radius coming up here. 
Zonia's been popped, double merge going in, so it's saying now there's the ultimate, gonna land up to cover. Oh, Zaynok! Like Zaynok! It's a Zonia's coming up for double dodge, meanwhile Zaynok gets taken down right Come here. Come on, double dodge! Gets the double kill, double dodge is trying to get the heck out of dodge, Rosie's chasing him down, we'll be we getting get the auto attacks up, and a teleport from Naru up into the top lane, Rosie's gonna throw down the chains, try and stare him up, but a good stop from Naru cancels out the chains, as Rosie's trying to run away from super minions in towards the Turkish base. But have a look at Crystal, he's gonna cut off Rosie's escape, or is he? Oh, the plants see. are still there. He misses him. He misses him. Rosie, a little bit of a 007 mission here as he tries to jump away from the rest <laughs> of the Turkish team. Hide with the wolves, Rosie. Hide with the wolves. Oh my word, he's actually going to do it. Naru has no idea. He's given up on the chase. Rosie, has he done it? No, Naru's suspicious. Oh, he's going to try to jump back. Rosie can't quite hide with his wolves anymore. Now going in towards the Turkish base. There is a Zed coming up. Rosie, can he get executed? Oh! He will. Oh! Elwin tries his best, but it's not close enough. Rosie, the true magician, but all he's actually done <laughs> is buy time for Team Fire to respawn and move towards the Baron. But this time, Team Ice are not going to give it for free. Swiper's coming in. Naru's going to jump on top of it. Spike Goes down, Crystal's but gone. Crystal Carbon's been altered by the Zed. Death Bar comes out. That will pop the Shaco. Radius trying to kite back as the AD carry is. He'll get popped by Naru. And it's still going to be a huge victory there for Team Fire. Oh, my word. Just bloodshed <laughs> over and over again. Two for two. You're now starting to see this hyper aggressive build from Crystal. He's just super squishy. Everyone has so much damage. Everyone is so squishy. You just need one CC to kill a single target. Oh, my God. Oh, I need to breathe the fish. I need to breathe. <laughs> well, Rosie's going to be back up here. Does have the home guards to get out and try and defend this base. The Nexus is open. Super minions are crashing on towards the base of Oceania. Three members of Turkey are looking to try and defend end the game here, but there are still three members of Ocean and left up. Super Minions now getting some damage on towards the Nexus, but Turkish does back out and waits for the rest of the team to come back up. Yeah, they realize that even though their re their team's respawn timers are the same as their opponents, they're obviously in the enemy base, so they're going to be in a five versus three much before the rest of their allies are able to catch up. So they're just going to back away for now. Maybe try and gain vision control. Do you do that in assassin mode? I'm not entirely sure. Um, but nevertheless, they're just going to retreat for the time being. So, death cap now completed for Naru. If he wasn't doing damage before, he's certainly going to do a lot of damage now. Baron has now been kicked off, and Naru's just being really the zoning t uh, player to deter OPL from getting it. And I think this will be another free Baron for two. No one from Oceania was close enough to contest for that Baron. Shaka was all the way back in his base with his little bit of vision control and his trap yep. set up, but... Also, two inhibitors down in your own base does make it a little bit difficult to back away. It's, it's a Turkish team with two Mountain Dragons and a Baron buff here, Vedius. Here comes Looks like are going to try and go in for the initiation. Swiper's coming. A big fish comes out from Swift, but Rosie over the top looking for him. But Double Dodge gets a nice channel off. Carver gets the first kill. Win it. Crystal will go down. Oceania trying to defend. Swift is gone, though. It's now a three on two. Let's see if they can pull up the kills here. But look at this. Turkish team are just moving towards the base. They might very well try to end it right now. They realize they've lost the fight, but they don't have to lose the game. Elwin, he's moving towards the Nexus. They can do it right now. They go for the back door. Elwin gets the shutdown towards Rosie. They're getting the damage down towards the Nexus. Can Turkey do it? The sun comes up from Swiper. Elwin's trying his best. Naru gets into oh! the mountain. He marches oh. forward. Naru gets the double kill and ends the game. Turkey pick up the win. Naru ending in style points. He lost the majority of his health on the enemy health sport point. And then he goes for the flash, he uses the passive to end the game just before Elwin dies.